for hello everyone welcome to our may 15 dapu yaji before we start let me quickly remind you to mute your mic during each presentation if you are not a speaker and you are welcome to ask questions during the q and q and a time after each presentation which is uh we give 10 minutes to each person presenters uh, q and a time uh, then you can also use the discussion room to type your comments or questions. Today's Yaji is about Dapu. The term Dapu was mentioned as early as 1623, according to Mr. Yan Xiaoxing. Dapu is like an activity of music archaeology or second time creation. If you want to know more about the explanation of this term, you can check John, check out John Thompson's website. There are also several articles about Dapu from several masters, such as Professor Bell Yong in English, which uh, Xu Jian has translated into Chinese, and Yao Gongbai, Chen Gongliang, Dai Xiaolian, and Yan Xiaoxing also have articles all in Chinese. Today we are going to have five of our members presenting their DAPU works, and Professor Ming Mei Yip will comment at the end. Before we start, let's hear some Qing music from a new friend, Dan Reed, from Montreal, Canada. Dan is a registered massage therapist specializing in Tui Na, uh, Chinese body work, mm, pushing and grasping and Chinese medicine. He's going to play Jing Ji Ying, Song of the Highest Calmness. Welcome, Dan. Hello, everybody. Uh, many thanks for having me. Uh, so I have uh, been a student of Peo's now since about October. Uh, this is my first performance. And uh, so, uh, Peyo and I were talking a, a little bit about improvisation, and uh, she suggested that maybe I uh, come up with something for this song. Uh, so I wrote a, about a one minute intro. Uh, this is a bit of a challenge because there's a lot of key changes in this song, actually, for a Kuchin song. Um, uh, but anyway, I'm happy with it uh, enough. And uh, yeah, it's a really interesting song. Uh, if you don't know it, I mean, some of it, there's parts in it that actually kind of remind me even of like Beethoven, um, but it was written in the, like 15 something, 1525 or so around there. Um, and yeah, so the Song of Highest Calmness, uh, I, I think it's probably inspired by the Tao Te Ching, uh, which has a phrase like that. And, uh, you know, when the, the water is clear and settled, you know, that the, uh, life arises from that and the mud settles and so forth. Okay, so enough talking, I'll uh, do what I can do here.
Very nice. It's very, very nice. I really like it. <laughs> Thank you, then. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So uh, the next one will be uni. Songxia Guantao. I uh, get to playing first, I suppose I'll have a short blurb and uh, share the screen while I'm still at the computer. Because uh, as you can see, it's quite a distance away from the actual uh, playing thing. Mm. Okay, share screen. Uh, here we go. So, uh, the piece I'm going to be sharing today is Song Xia Guan Tao. Now this is a score that existed in uh, multiple manuscripts. But then uh, the one that was presented to me way back when, in uh, what was it again? Uh, er, in the mid 2000s, early uh, 2010s, uh, I believe it was. Uh, yes, it was requested to me uh, to dafu this, and then uh, yeah, I started the project back in 2005. When I was requested to. Oh, I'm hearing something. I'm hearing something. Okay, so uh, this score is from 1776. It's from Yan Lu Lo And uh, the score is Mid-Qing Dynasty. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, until basically we dabble this thing again, nobody is played this uh, piece uh, presently in active practice or uh, transmission. And uh, if you do a Google search into who plays it today, uh, you'll realize that uh, I'm pretty much the earliest uh, video or audially recorded tape of uh, this piece. There's been one or two attempts of it in uh, from some guy in Singapore, but that's pretty much about it. And I can see from uh, their style of playing, they were uh, influenced by uh, the results of my dapu. But anyway, this is the original score. And uh, as with all Ming and Qing scores, until the uh, latter part of the 19th century, so at least 1870s to 1890s, when they started putting uh, dots and dashes for the uh, uh, banyan, the actual rhythm meter, uh, most of these were just compacted as much as possible onto uh, plate, uh, wooden or copper, and then printed. So there is no consideration as to uh, what's the distance, from, musically speaking, from one note to the next. So as we know uh, with typical dapu practice, 
sometimes when it says that there is a uh, foot stop, for example, it may not necessarily represent something that is uh, put directly into a weight before the uh, next note. Let's see if I can... Her. Let's see. Okay, so uh, sometimes sometimes yin may be a very long uh, drag, and some other at other times a yin could be a, a very understated character. Uh, for example, right here uh, with the toishu, like you have a very quick uh, press on the outside, then you push out immediately, and it just glosses over. So, what is the value of uh, a certain character is not known. So when I was uh, first offered to um, uh, with this score, I was simply asked, uh, what level do you think this piece was? Do you think I could uh, quickly learn it and play it? And the first uh, look at it, and I was going like, no, wait, this is not going to be an easy piece because full plates worth of score. That's and it has like um, seven or eight sections. So it took, it was quite the undertaking, the half wing, all of this. Uh, let's see, stop share. Uh, and so it took a while for me to actually uh, dap this whole thing. And then I wrote up a dap report of, of all the nine sections. Uh, which I later posted on the blog as well as the uh, Facebook International group. Uh, you can find this on uh, my, in my book from page 160 onwards until 166. But uh, I try to bring into stuff like uh, what is a section and uh, what is uh, how do you divide a certain phrase into the next, but really. It's a continual process because uh, this is one of those things like if you just finish you have something and you push it out the door. But is it really actually a perfected piece or what the actual original intention is? We may never know. And uh, one of those things that you've got to take time in doing, and it's not just a, the work of one person, is to actually stuff it to new people with new perspectives. Either you invite another experienced player to also do a dapu and compare, or in my case, if I don't have that resource, I ask uh, my students to actually learn the piece and while they're at it, uh, not learn the rhythm that I did it or that I prescribed inside the book. I tell them, this is the part where I have nothing more to teach you, you teach me. So if you were presented with just the original score, how would you interpret this? And it becomes this back and forth process of negotiating, trying to speak out if there's something different, something that's beyond that logic. With my experiences learning from a master Zhang Chengwei uh, in London, England, I realized that a lot of scores, uh, when I parse them, I have a penchant for a certain rhythm. For example, or uh, like that. So I have these strong, weak rhythm pensions that are very uh, simple and easy to break down. But if you want to parse everything like that, then the uh, score will be very monotonous. So uh, how do you put that interest, that shu in there is very important. And sometimes you need to break those boundaries and try to squish things together and see if it collides. So right now, these days, when I'm teaching uh, new students who are at the level to learn this piece, and I tell them, okay, this is what I got in the beginning because of a very simplistic way of making things work. What happens if I don't do it that way? What happens if I challenge myself to do something harder? And uh, I realize that everything I have written in my book could be wrong. So uh, I will try to play something. Uh, first, that is the original uh, version, which is a very simplistic kind of uh, rhythm. So simple, basic, strong, weak, rubato kind of style. Ah. Uh.
It's very simple. Okay, so that's the first page of Song Jia Guantao as I would have it back on my old YouTube video. So if you guys uh, seen that old YouTube video, you probably would know what the rest is. Uh, if you're interested, go watch that video. So uh, I've been thinking about the experiences with the Master Zheng Chengwei, and uh, one thing that struck me very, very hard is uh, when I was learning Qiu Shui, or uh, Autumn Floods from him. And uh, it's that when you have a section that just keeps on going on and on, for example, in this piece of... Uh it's very one note up, one note down, very simple, uh, very straightforward, and if you play it in a even rhythm it's very bland but uh, with Xiu Shui for example what was it is it uh, anyway I uh, can't seem to remember that section but what happens is that if you accelerate uh, a certain small uh, section you will actually and then uh, put it into a sudden stop that kind of uh, a intentional asymmetrical kind of uh, arrangement actually brings out the entire piece uh, to a whole new level and uh, one of the things that I constantly teach uh, my students is to never underestimate the small little characters. Those little uh, zhuang or shuang zhuang, those actually tell a lot more of a story than uh, it just one little measly character seems to depict. So I'll play that first page again, but uh, with a comp if I smushed all those plain sounding one up, one down phrases together, and I try to get something different.
So that was adding on the third section to from the last page. The third section I have not changed from the uh, original way how I played. It, the uh, section itself actually suggested uh, that kind of playing style. It's a very lively piece. But as contrasted to the first start when I had the original very flat kind of rhythm I was going, you can hear that the first two sections matched in style with section three. So that is a new clue that I'm picking up on. Maybe uh, the entire piece needs to be smooshed up a little more, so, so the uh, one, two phrases should actually be played together as one. So these are the sort of the new findings uh, I get. But anyway, let's continue to the end of the piece. Section four.
So it's still very much a work in progress for me, uh, trying to smush uh, that new style into a foundation of what I have uh, in the past. Because I have been playing this piece for, what, 10 years the old way? So reinventing a piece uh, because you are suddenly inspired by a completely different way of looking really takes time to work. Uh, so the old saying, three months for a small piece, uh, one year for a big piece, they haven't even started accounting for uh, stylistic changes or a completely new way of looking at a piece yet. So this is just an example of um, how much you, how much variation and uh, how many new perspectives you can possibly get from uh, at one simple old score. So old dogs learning new tricks. I suppose I can open the floor now to questions. Yes, let's uh, welcome questions. Very much a WIP kind of thing. Uh, yeah, um, thank you, Sir Ting. Uh, like it very much. Uh, I wonder if you can talk a little bit about the uh, <coughs> uh, the the like the uh, the diao of this piece. How do you feel? Uh, because I feel it is very special. Kind of this. Um, I haven't heard this version. I think before. So can you talk a little bit about you know the. Uh, First of all, this thing is in standard tuning. Okay, standard tuning and, and it's standard tuning. I think it's a. Uh, I mean, it, the main key of this thing is third string. So what, Gong Diao? Okay. Or Shang. So it's a uh, basically like a Zhong Lu. It can't be more uh, typical <clears throat> than. I mean, it ends on the same harmonic. So it's a uh, what? Jue? Yeah, Jue. Or third string, but. So it can't be any more typical. Uh -huh. And skill wise, way back when, I would say that this is a level 7 piece. If it was in, put into the conservatory uh, exam level, I would say it's just one level under Tianwen Ge Liu Shui. So it's not a technically easy piece. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the hard part is. Uh, <coughs> What I said before is this. How do you interpret something so straightforward and actually make it meaningful? And for a decade, I didn't have a good answer except for that. Mm. Now it's... I integrated the whole thing together, so it's not even uh, considered as like four things, but just two. So by slurring what I had all I had along uh, because of the fact, I don't know, I'm getting lazy, things are changing and stuff like that, I discovered something new. And sometimes I have to intentionally induce something new by having a fresh perspective on it, and then I learn back from them. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Uni. Anybody has any question for Uni? We have. I'm a little far away from the screen right now. Uh, can, can, does anyone have uh, comments or uh, stuff they have to read from the chat? There are some comments about silk strings. Yes. People. Today I'm using silk strings, yes. Care to read them out loud? Because uh, I'm a little far away from the computer right now. Can I see your uh, the the score you are looking at? Uh, oh, you, of course. Like, hold it to the uh, to the camera. The score so. I'm using is still the one that I uploaded straight from the standards of the Gu Chen. So uh, let's see. I would be using directly this. So this is one called "Watching Waves from Under the Pines." Uh, from Yan Lu Lo Jin Pu, wrote by me. There are some uh, mistakes in here, but uh, I basically marked them on my book. Maybe it'll get fixed uh, by next edition. Uh, by now, I have complete, almost uh, rewritten or doffed the use of the uh, five line staff I have existing here. A lot of the stuff which were uh, 
uh, right now as uh, one thing. For example, uh, the example I showed earlier was this. So you can see that it's a dotted eight, uh, sorry, dotted quarter <coughs> kind of uh, rhythm. So I've completely gone out, done away with that. Now it's it's just slurred together into one a beat. So a lot of things have changed. Uh, which is why, of course, uh, as Gu Shen players, when we look at a score with the uh, rhythm or the tempo of the piece, they're always uh, just for reference. And the reason for that is uh, that's just how one player played it at a certain point in time. So now I'm confident that uh, when I get around to making the next edition of this piece, it'll reflect my uh, latest way of playing this piece for sure. Um, I have the observation, I, I see in the original tin pool that it's, in, it's said to be in duet mode. And uh, yes, thank you. In the, in, the, uh, in, the Ming, in the Ming, earlier in the Ming, um, that usually meant Jet string, which is the third string, was the tonal center, and an important secondary center was the note jet above that. So, if jet is C, that would mean E would be a main tonal center. I don't know whether that was. I, I couldn't hear that. Uh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Similar to the answer, Ian, uh, it does uh, focus on. Let's see if there are any E's around. Well, it wouldn't be E because E would be G, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's because the one note above the third string is the fourth string. Am I getting you correctly? But there were a lot of uh, fourth string here as well. That that would mean well, actually, that uh, would mean the the equivalent of the open third open fifth string would be J. Open fifth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, tone centers in the fifth beginning here like this. Well. This one I want to particularly bring out uh, without Zheng Cheng Wei teaching me Kong Zi Du Yi, I would never have actually uh, reinterpreted this uh, in the same way as how you play uh, Kong Zi Du Yi's double drum here. I would have simply played this in the past, but now I would isolate this whole thing. Uh, So it's important to take a look at how other schools, how other players treat uh, individual techniques or um, certain ways of re reading their scores and then adapting new ways to look at how scores are to be parsed, rhythm and all, and technique. Keep your eyes open is the lesson of the day. Any other Thank you, Uni. Um, I think the time is about it for you. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, you. we can move on to the Hope next that uh, inspires uh, other people who are doing Dafu and to always keep revising your work. Okay. Okay, so the thank you, Uni, again. Um, I hope you can um email me your um uh, slides so i can post on the website is that possible they're not slides uh what i'm showing you right now is just uh my textbook on this piece oh i see as well as the original scores okay so uh, back before they're pasted into the book or uh they're just uh, the original score from Ye Lu Lu Qin Pu from 1766. i see I can send you those. Yes, They're please. Just files yes, for please. Yes. Mm. Okay. 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 Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. You. So the next okay. one will be Jim. Uh, however, Jim is not feeling well today. Uh, I think he, he he can answer question by typing, but uh, he cannot talk too much. So I'm going to read his statement first. And then I will play the his video of 
呃，列子御风 ，Let's ride the wind. So, um, so first, Jean feels sorry that、uh, he cannot appear today as he is sick. And this piece was a dapu Jean did several years ago. Ironically, he tried to dapu it many years before and failed. As he could not find a rhythmic approach, later on he feels he was more successful. What is interesting about this piece is the many contrasts within it that seem to give a programmatic approach to Lie Zi and the story of his riding the wind, ups ups and downs. There is also a good deal of tonal variation that seems to include some just intonation, which is chenlu notes here and there, including an exceptional da yuan with two contrasting harmonics, one that is just、uh, chenlu and one is Pythagorean. Uh, and quote close but not the same end quote. Okay, so now I'm going to play the share my screen so we can listen the piece. Okay, so here. Start. Thank、you
Uh, so, does anybody has any question for Jim? Uh, I do have two questions for Jim. And uh, here's my question. When, when you encounter unknown fingerings, what do you do to decide how to play? And the second question is, some Hui positions are very strange. What is your judgment if it is a printing problem or not. So Jim, I asked him before, so, so he gave me his answer. For the first question, fingerings, first, ask an expert, quote, John, end quote, and see what he says. I have asked Chen Changling before. And two, compare as many Qingpu fingering dictionaries as I can, e.g. Guan Pinghu's book. I have a book in Qingfu that purports to explain some Shen Qi Mipu fingerings or Tai Gu Yi Ying or a comparable early book. For Shen Qi Mipu, I also have Zhang's work and Wu Wenguang's as well as looking at what they did may be helpful. Don't be afraid to look at other people's explanations. For this question two, regarding Hui positions, we have the problem of mean inaccuracy for Hui Y positions. So we tend to interpret things like Ba Xia. Uh, I think it should be Ba Shang as 7.9 or whatever assume it is pythagorean maybe it ain't though e.g as i mentioned 11.8 or 12. however we also can refer to music in the rest of the piece and that may lead us to clues of a useful nature typos are always possible and certainly exist. For music clues, we have yun. And so that yun means the Chinese shen yun the yun, uh, yun wei the yun. And so that may help us to with both structure and note value. Quote, one of the two 
matching positions might be a typo and if so maybe we can figure it out end quote so phrase endings are crucial we also know that early Ming and likely late Song have many non-Pythagorean notes because of the extreme reaction to that later in time. A short story, at, the, at one point I decided to learn He Ming, uh, He Ming, uh, no, <laughs> He Ming Jiu Gao from Shen Qi Mi Pu. I was stumped by the main theme, actually, because there is a fingering that stays uh, that says more or less uh, the note is between Hui Nai and Hui Ten. Oh, good. So I called Chen Changling and he gave me a standard answer. There is only one accepted Pythagorean note between 10, 11, 10 and 11. Quote, so he was claiming it was a Pythagorean minor third, actually, end quote. Later on, said note was actually edited out because it is so wrong. Sigh, <laughs> but I agree, it is a minor third. I just don't think anyone plays it as a Pythagorean note in real life. Just, okay. So, um, any anybody has any question for Jim? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, make a quick comment that um, I recognize in Jim's um, DAPU of this this piece uh, some similar kind of problem with what I you know I was doing on the uh, Li Sao. Uh, they are you know both from the Shen Qi Mi Pu and. Uh, um, and and I also kind of recognize some of the intonation and uh, uh, <clears throat> you know which you know I will kind of talk a little bit about when I start playing mine. But I agree strongly that there are to me um, very frequently uh, you know um, both both. Uh, you know, using you know, mixing uh, different intonations using both Pythagorean and just um, for the piece of Li Sao, I certainly think it is not accidental and it is um, meant to be like that. Um, and regarding the the position, um, the Hui Wei, <coughs> you know, if if I see repetitive appearance of the same position. I usually won't uh, take it as a mistake or a typo. I, I think, you know, in that case it is, I will, no matter how strange it, I will, I will play it. If it only appear like once or twice, then it could be a typo, those strange, strange one. Um, so just want to make quick comments on that. Thank you, Shui Shan. Mm -hmm. I'm rather surprised that uh, Dapur's conundrum about the uh, microtonal differences between the Sanfen Sun Yi, note that I'm saying this is a Sanfen Sun Yi, not Pythagorean, there are differences. For those who don't know, please check out episode one of the Concise History of Chinese Musical Temperament on YouTube, which I made, uh, with the just intonation ones. Yes, there's a difference. Uh, one is a little higher, one is a little lower. Uh, just as lower, by the way. I think that uh, we choose which to use, depending on whether if we're doing it on both the press note as well as its corresponding 12 tone notes on harmonics because harmonics usually tend to be just especially when we're talking about the uh, fifths ones like uh, ways 3, 6, 8, uh, 11, those ones um, so those ones are just, those are lower but if we're just using them on uh, press notes I see no reason why not to go just going uh sentence and ye all together. It depends on whether you're using those notes matching it with the harmonics. Because if you are using harmonics as well for that upper register, uh you don't have a choice. That's the closest thing you've got, so uh you gotta match it with the just. But it's a performance thing and the limitation of the instrument. But otherwise, go for it. Um I I can you hear me speaking? Um, I was, uh, I don't know what the, well, my problem is, but uh, 
when I was speaking before, I think there was a feedback, and I think maybe it's because uh, the uh, I'm using an external microphone, and so uh, I, I have to turn the good. sound down or something. Anyway, no, I think it was probably Junie's. Uh, Junie has some trouble with echo. That probably was it. No, that was when I was speaking before. But uh, anyway, about about this, um, I've studied. I've heard that there's a difference between Sanfuni, Sanfunsuni and Pythagorean, and I've read here and read, read there, and I cannot find what the difference is. Uh, the other thing is that the, uh, it's clear that, it's clear to me anyway, that they, the, in the old times, they really appreciated the difference between the, the Pythagorean third and the natural third, because um, there's some pieces like the Elon, where the, that's, it, it starts out with those two notes next to each other. And it really is beautiful. It's just, you know, it's just a special sound that they seem to like. And I think the test of that good it is as, as um, uh, um, um, Shui Shan was saying, if they keep using it, they must like it. So it's not a bug, it's a feature. We want to intentionally have two flavors of a third ready. And right. We choose it on our right. instrument. Yuni, can you speak directly into your microphone? Because your echo really makes it difficult for us to understand completely what you're saying. Thank you. Should I repeat what I was saying early on? No, but it's much better now. Thanks. OK, great. Any question, any more question, please welcome to bring in. We have um, 10 minutes for Jim's section. Hey, yo, there are two people who are discussing things in the chat. Are you evil? And um, I forget the other person. And it's uh, Yan Chen. Uh, again, uh, just for the sake of uh, those watching on YouTube, I guess I'll uh, quickly speak up about it. Uh, Yan Chen is bringing up uh, the concept of the Lü and the uh, Sanfen Sun Yi Lü. Uh, first, and how it's measured on the chin. Uh, according to Xu Li, there are two ways of uh, matching up by the Hui and matching up by the Jun or register. And uh, I think that's a very interesting point that uh, Yan Chen uh, brought up because uh, most people use just uh, the dot markers, which are perfect uh, alignments. Uh, so ratios, just ratios of the instrument. But then if we don't use those at all and we just aim for the perfect uh pythagorean or sanfen sun yi close but different kind of methods uh then we get two different sounds and of course uh you can only use sanfen sun yi when on open or on pressed notes so there's the difference between that it's possible to really have the uh yeah harmonics on inside. Mm -hmm. uh, Yan Chen, if you want to speak up more on, about that, I think you know more than me about this. Yan Chen, you have a mic, right? He's on mute, so. Uh, sorry, I, I, I prefer typing. But Yan Chen, it, typing makes it difficult, especially when someone else is talking. And we have to read what you're saying, which could be quite. All right, sorry. Um, sorry. Um, just, just don't continue. Moving on from the what I what I typed already. Um, some people may think that the that the difference of using shi yi hui or shi hui ba fen um, could be could be simply that the those two those temperaments are not told apart. They do not. The difference are not recognized. However, in Chen Yingzhi's book, he found evidence. He said, Chen said he found evidences that from the Southern Song Dynasty, there have been, there, there has been, um, it, they, they, these differences have been told apart and uh, deliberately, um, and they deliberately used in two different senses. So you're saying that it's intentionally divided between 10-8 and 11 itself. And there are uh, examples. Yes, 
I don't, know how you can get, I don't know how you can get that difference from the Sung Dynasty because in the Sung Dynasty, they never wrote 10.8. 10.8 was a development at the end of the Ming Dynasty. You, you'll never see it before. The, and, and any surviving Qin book that I, I've seen, I've never seen 10.8 until, until the Ming Dynasty, until the Qing Dynasty. Uh, the I, I remember that the evidence is not from the, from the scores. It's from the temperament Temperament article, temperament articles from the from the time. What are there theoretical arguments? Uh yes, um, Xu and Chen's art arguments. Uh, -huh. uh that would be Xu Li as uh, no, the guy who wrote Xin Tong, not Xi Lu Tong, Xin Tong, but and uh, what's right. the name of the book that Chen Mingzi wrote? Uh. It's not a book. It's not an independent book that is that is passed passed on to today. It is called Qin Lu Fa Wei, but it's but it, as a part of the Qin Shu Da Quan, or also known as Yongle Qin Shu Ji Cheng. Can you write that in the chat? That's the time to use the chat <laughs> when you okay. refer to something. So once again, uh, to clearly iterate, it's the uh, Yongle Qin Shu Da Quan. Uh, Yongle Qin Shu Ji Cheng. Mm -hmm. mm, but in mainland China, it's more commonly known as Qin Shu Da Quan. If I recall correctly, the title of uh, these two books, the content is the same, but then there are two titles uh, for the same book because it was uh, basically pirated. Uh, so, Jim, um, you still cannot talk, right? Okay. <laughs> so, has anyone else has question for Jim? Uh, if not, we can move on to the next section now. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Okay. See you, Jim. Uh, uh, so, uh, next one will be me. And I'm going to talk about my Dapu of uh, a so-called Taoist piece, Cai Zhen Yu from Xi Lu Tang Qing Tong. Uh, I will briefly talk about the, okay, first I need to share my screen. I will talk first and then I will play. So let me share my screen first. Um, I'm going to share sorry. I'm going to share my slides. Okay, so here is my slides. Share screen. Okay. So uh, I will talk briefly talk about the following topics. Motivation about the title, the epilogue of Cai Zhen Yu from Xi Lu Tang Qin Tong, the tuning and the mode, and how to perform. In the fall of 2006, when I went to Taiwan to meet some Qin friends, I heard a friend talking about this piece, saying it is a Taoist piece. I was very curious, so I decided to study it myself in early 2007. About the title, Cai Zhen Yu, Cai means to pick, to select, to gather. Zhen means real, the genuine, or natural property. And Yu means purposeful traveling. So I decided to translate it as traveling to gather truth. The composer is unknown. It could have been composed before the Ming Dynasty. 
The name of Cai Zhen You could be taken from the book of Zhuang Zi, section fourteen, uh, the turning of heaven, Tian Yun Pian. And so, from the quote of Zhuang Zi, I feel this phrase could help my understanding of the Cai Zhen You, uh, free and easy, erected in in action, plain and simple. At the end of the piece of uh, in Xi Lutang Qing Tong, there is this footnote, and I also find this phrase could help my understanding of this piece. The mind of a hermit who was arrogant and stayed outside the world. Cai Zhen Yu is using standard tuning, and the mode is Jue mode. You can tune your Qing from the first to the seventh string as C, D, F, G, A, C, D, or one to two steps lower. For example, my silk string Qing is tuned one step lower in this tuning. I send it as Re, Mi, So, La, C, si, Re, Mi, uh, uh, two, three, five, six, seven, two, three, in, in order to match the Jue mode. Next slide. Uh, the decision of Remi Sola Si Remi was made recently after I recorded my playing and put in Ripper, which is an audio recording software, to generate a staff notation system for me to understand why it is in Jue mode. Due to limited time, I will not spend too much time on this matter, but will just uh, show this drawing of a scale that I think is the closest scale of Cai Zhen Yu, which is this scale. I also analyzed all the notes that have been used in each section. Uh, Jue and Yu, which is number three and number six, are used the most. Then is the seven. Seven um, is jue, uh, is called ren jue or bian gong in Chinese. So here I have all the sections, um, notes have been using in that section. So after analysis the notes in Cai Zhen Yu, I come up with this scale uh, right here. Uh, start with this sharp A and then B, C, D, E, F, G, A. However, there's a sharp 5 being showed up only once in the entire piece. Uh, so, but I, I decide not to put it in. And then to decide how to play, first I have to decide the phrasing. As this traditional notation does not give clear indication of phrasing, like most of the traditional notation we can see period, but in this piece there's no little circle right the period. And um, then there are some parts that are not quite clear, such as where to repeat. This piece does not have complicated fingering, so the rest is just to play it and to decide the rhythm and a few parts where I need to decide the pitches. So to make to find the phrasing I mark on this red mark with this red lines to to decide my phrasing. And then so where to repeat such there's a uh, here tong tong go we I call it from go zai zuo, but there's no go. Only here there's a go, but later on they, they don't show any go. So I have to decide if I want to either this final two go or this earlier go. And so then here are the places I need to decide where to repeat, right? 
like I say before, 重构再做，重构再做 But there's no goal, so I have to decide here. That's what I want to repeat. In section four, which is the only section that has Hui positions between dots, where I need to be careful to for pitch decisions. Okay, only section four has、uh, show the Hui position such as qi and ba, right? Qi ba. It's not seven point eight like John just said before.、Um, it's and six seven doesn't mean six point seven. It means between six. Between seven and eight, and or between six and seven, Hui. But between, there's still many possibilities in between. Usually, it's the half, but it can be a little off. Okay, so, so here seven eight seven between seven eight, I decide it's seven point seven, and the the six seven I decide it's six point five. And here seven eight, it's seven it's seven point eight on the fourth string.、And、then here we have six seven, and six seven on the seventh string and sixth string, but I decide it it is six point five. And then this is also in section four. There is a one line technique here, so one line technique here. It can be played as like do do re do re or do do si do si, right? You can either go up or go down first. So I decide to play it as do do si do si, and this is the only number five notes here in the entire piece. I mean, the only sharp five, which is on the fifth string, slide up to eighth way. Okay, and then this is the ending part of Cai Zhen Yao, and you can see the ending phrase starts with Ren Jue, which is C or we call some people call it T,、um, and ends with Yu Jue, La Mi, right, La Mi, together. My understanding of Jue mode is that it is based on the Chinese circle of fifths system. The Jue was generated from Yu, and the Jue generates Ren Jue. They are like a mother to son to grandson relationship. So one might find these three notes used quite a lot in a Jue mode piece, especially in the beginning or slash end end of the phrase or end. A section and the final ending. To decide the rhythm, I have to.、Uh, I have no method but using my intuition. So now I will play Cai Zhen Yao. So I will stop sharing, and I will start to play. Today I am using this nylon string without metal core, which is a Long Ren Bing Xian Qing. Okay.
Thank you. That's my presentation. Uh, thank you, Peyo, for your presentation. Any questions, anyone? Peyo, those yeah. of us with less experience really appreciated the logic that you presented it with, that presented your music. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you.
makes uh, it available. Peyo, can I ask a question? Okay, okay. Peyo, yeah, um, you mentioned when the notation or the temperature is written, qi ba, qi dian ba, but you decide it should be 7.7. .7. Mm. Um, is there any big difference or how, what makes you decide it's not qi ba as written in the temperature, but it should be 7.7? .7? Um, be, qi ba usually means seven point half, between seven and eighth. But sometimes I just think it's not exactly on the half. It can be a little left or a little right. That's why I decide it's a little left on the seven oh, half. Okay, I got it. I got it. Okay, mm. thank you. And mm. there is one, there is one um, rhythmic pattern. I think it's like you wrote a three. 就是好像一个三那个叫什么三连音，and um oh. how did you decide? <laughs> Is it oh, so for, for the step notation, uh, actually, I'm my playing is not really following that, but okay. because I generated with the Reaper uh, software, I record my playing, I put it into the software, so the software make the step notation for oh, me. Oh, okay. <laughs> decide for you. Okay. Right. You. Okay. Okay. I'm just wondering how you decide that if, from an I, I don't really know too oh, much okay. about staff notation. Know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ming Mei, thank you for bringing up the question. So uh, when you mentioned uh, the I, the concept of Jian or between, so for example, seven eight and uh, what was it six seven? There are technically two possibilities, uh, one lu apart. So as we know uh, with the uh, Ming style uh, Hui uh, Wei system, so you have basically uh, three major parts between two Hui. So it's usually described as X Hui above, Y Hui below, and then there's something in the middle, which is the Jian we're talking about here. So we're not talking about like the 0.1.2s or the 0.8.9s. Yeah, but I, I, I got it now, yeah. <laughs> Uh, in the case of, say, between 6 and 7, there is the difference between 6.7 and 6.4, which is one semitone apart. Uh, now, I see that Peyo chose 6.5, which because it's not 6.4 or 6. Rather, it's, uh, I don't know, maybe a just intonation, flatted version, adjusted version of 6.4. So I'm going like... If you really were to be forced, is could it be uh, the 0.5 rather than 0.4 is a result of uh, observation bias or observation error because you probably caught it from you playing and you just look at it and go like, oh, this is it. Or uh, is this an intentional um, just intonation, flatted balance kind of thing? So, Pei, on to you. Thank you. Thank you, Uni. Thank you, Mimei. Any other question? But actually, what's a question? Oh, well, sorry. <laughs> what was the question? Uh, let me try reiterating it. Was the 0.5 intent? Uh, how did you achieve that? Did you observe oh. that it was 0.5 and then record it down? I just, or uh, for the people, right. take it from a it's, chart. It's from my from hearing. hearing. I just I feel comfortable in that position, and I decide it's there. I see. It's not really using any theory to decide. Yeah. Uh, so um, adds on to the uh, on complication theory. and sophistication of the issue. Yes. <laughs> okay. So if there's no more question, we will move on to our next speaker, which is Shui Shan. Shui Shan will do talk about Li Sao from Shen Qi Mingku. Hi, everyone. Um, <clears throat> all right, can you hear me okay? Yes, yes. Yeah, and... Yeah, very good. That's good. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, so yeah, this piece <coughs> is also from Shen Qi Mi Pu. And uh, um, 
So it's a very long. It's a 18 section plus a um, the harmonic ending. Um, so what I you know I encounter a lot of problems. So first, you know I'm not going to play uh, the entire 18 sections. I'm only going to play uh, I play um, like two thirds. Um, I played 12 sections. The reason for that. Number one is um, for the interest of time. So if I play all, try to play all the 18 sections, I might not be able to play it smoothly, you know, uh, at all. So I try to play fewer so that I can, you know, play it okay. Um, it's also still just a work in progress. So um, there will be some mistake or, or um, you know, not playing so well sections, but I, that's one of the reason I try, I play 12 instead of 18. So I, how I decided to, which section to play, which section not to play. Uh, so this bring me to the second um, reason. So usually when I encounter something that is, you know, I feel really problematic, um, I kind of uh, skip it. And I try to find the next section that usually start with the same note, right? Um, so for example, um, section, um, section four, section five, and section six, the both, uh, you know, all the three start with this note. So on the, um, Ninth way of the um, eighth, uh, uh, the fifth string. So kind of like that. So what you know when I found this, you know if for example in in this section four I play it, it's okay. But I you know I um, for the interest of time, you know I jump to sixth because it start with the same note and. I tried all of them and they seemed on the same mood, uh, but in order to play continuously from the beginning to the end, I kind of skip number four and number five and direct to number six from number three. So that's basically the justification for skipping. And uh, one of the skipping is because I found it extremely problematic. I couldn't play it well, <laughs> no matter how hard I work, I might need to work more on that later. And I know um, some other earlier players, the kind of a, uh, the use other scores trying to correct it. I try not to do that. Um, I know Guan Ping who did it. You know, when he found something problematic, he will find another score, usually with, you know, a later score to maybe, you know, in that section, the other score uh, make more sense. And then he will kind of a, uh, Used a section from a different score uh, to to substitute that section from the Shen Qi Mi Pu. I try to not to do that. I try to work with the same one, and uh, because uh, you know I feel quite strongly the other you know there are other pieces in Shen Qi Mi Pu which are quite good, and you know we can play them. It's very consistent. So I uh, I doubt that there um, you know only you know some pieces cannot be done so it's i may just need to work harder so that's one thing i wanted to talk about about how i play it basically i play 12 out of the 18 section plus the um, ben diao fan, um the uh, harmonic ending for this kind of tuning for this uh, diao. Um, so the second thing I wanted to explain a little before I play the piece is I found it, you know, like picking up from um, <clears throat> what Jim said for his Dapu uh, from the same book. Um, you know, there are just intonation and um, uh, unmistakably just in intonation because yeah it used the fifth string on the eighth way use this one so use that intonation 
So that harmonic is absolutely just intonation, but I also think there are um, other press, you know, in the pressed stopped note, I also, you know, use the just intonation. The reason is, um, let me try to share my screen. Uh, can I, Peyo? Uh, yeah, so Raf, can, can Sui San share screen? I believe so. You can try. So, um, yeah. Yes, okay. okay. Yeah, so this is, uh, for example, in this section, uh, section, section number six, um, this part, um, the pressed notation has both, has a hui wai and has a 13 hui. So usually, they, you know, they do not appear together. So, um, and in this case, you know, you will see there's a, a for example, um, here you have 十三回, right? 十三回, here. And then on the 对起, it asks you to play 会外. So usually, you know, when we play um, pure Pythagorean noting, we 会外 is like very close to 十三回, so you probably want to do both. Uh, so here is 会外. And um, it's lower than 十三回. Um, so to me, this indicates this is not a mistake because it is using both hui wai. For example, here, dui qi, it says hui wai, right? Zhong hui wai. Uh. So both hui wai and shi san hui, so how are we going to decide hui wai? And, um, <clears throat> and shi san hui, so to me, this shi san hui is not also, also not a mistake because, especially because there's later, there is a shi er hui ban. So for example, here, there's a shi er hui ban. I'm pretty sure it's very hard to read, but after I figure it out, I'm pretty sure it's shi er hui ban. So in another word, it has this three note very close. So shi er hui ban is here. Shi san hui is here. And uh, hui, so how to decide hui wai then? So I decided to play hui, uh, hui wai the same um, the hui wai in the um, just intonation. So in another word, it is lower than the um, normal hui wai we, we would play. So I play it kind of symmetrical with the shi er hui ban according with the shi san hui in the center. So I play that hui wai here. So it's lower than the um, uh, Pythagorean hui wai. Pythagorean hui wai is usually here. It's very close to shi san hui. And that hui wai, it's roughly, I think it's roughly shi san hui er fen, or a little bit more than shi san hui er fen. And that note, that note is the same note, I play it the same note as the um, the eighth hui harmonic, or you know, um, which is a lower note than the normal hui wai. So it's both of both of them are you know they are the basically the the same note, right? It's, it's the uh, same note, uh, same mi, right? So this this mi jiao yin. Um, and this mi is lower than, so it's lower. Um, so I try to play that hui wai with a lower mi according to just um, intonation. So that's basically how I treat this. And uh, basically the reason is the simultaneous appearance of shi san hui, hui wai, and shi er hui ban, um, which, you know, make me decide to play that hui wai, not in Pythagorean, but in just intonation. And also because there's a just intonation appearing here. So I try to play it the same height as this. Uh, I'm sorry. 
so it's lower than the normal Hui Wai. Um, and that to me, um, I'm not sure, you know, I cannot speak for Zhu Quan. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, what was the original intonation, but I think I make a, my judgment uh, based on some logic, based on some reason, and um, uh, the result satisfies me. Um, so I, so basically, that is something um, I think here, you know, obviously, <clears throat> um, there's no kind of like in the Qing Dynasty score, which clearly indicating Shi Hui Ba Fen, which is unmistakably, um, you know, Pythagorean. Here, there's nothing like that. But based on what I just said, I will play, you know, um, both uh, Pythagorean notes and um, just uh, intonation notes anyway. And I think um, it makes the music richer and more interesting. <laughs> So, um, and this is just one example. There are many other places that I think, and of course the score, the tuning is unique, the third thing, right? The tuning is um, Jin Ar Wu, right? So it's, um, you tune up the fifth string and the second string. So as a result, the seventh string um, the second string and eight, the seventh string and second string are not of the same note. Right. So usually, of course, we all know in standard tuning and in most other tuning, one sixth are the same and two seven are the same. But here is not. Right. So one sixth, one and six are to do the same. But the two and the seven are not the same. So this uh, led to interesting music playing on this piece because uh, you feel almost you are constantly jumping in between two different key. Right? Because this kind of tuning, it could be interpreted as um, re fa sol la do re mi, right? Re fa sol la do re mi. It could also be easily in, interpreted as uh, la do, la do, re, mi, so, la, si. Right. So it could be la do, re, mi, so, la, si, or uh, re, mi, uh, re, fa, so, la, do, re, mi. So based on how the notes are put together in some sections, you know, in this tuning, I mean, the third string, I tune F on the, on the um, kind of metal string. So you almost feel sometimes it sounds like if you borrow the Western notation, Western music theory, sometimes it sounds like B flat. Sometimes it sounds like E flat. And that is because sometimes we will automatically interpret this string arrange as re fa sol la do re mi, but in other case, it makes more sense to interpret it as la do re mi so la si. So that's another kind of interesting thing for for this. So I'm going to in, end my um, um, screen sharing and uh, play a little. Uh, please bear with me because um, it is not going to be uh, very artistic because I'm still learning on it. Right. <clears throat> the sun is very strong, so probably the, the string will get off tone because of the heat. But, uh, um, you know, um, please forgive me for that as well. <laughs>
Right. Thank you. So, Thanks, uh, mm -hmm. so now uh, I think my presentation is over and welcome questions. <clears throat> Uh, I probably want to also test my mic. Is the sound here? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, that was great, but I do have one question, and that mm -hmm. had to do with the end of end of the first section. Okay. Uh, after saying you liked strange sounds, you've got the, one of the strangest ones there, which I think you've changed. It's the um, it's the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth, maybe. Uh, uh, figure from the end where it says play uh, Josia. Uh, is it on the which section is it? Is uh, it? A wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm looking at the wrong. <laughs> it's um, it's the fourth note from the end of the first section. It says uh, an eighth position on the fourth string. Oh. And that and that gives. In my transcription, which is I, I'm using two, four, five, six, one, two, three. Wait, um, John, I'm sorry. Yeah. So, uh, are you talking about the shu, right? Shu. The shu, yeah. Uh, the shu, yeah. Shu. And uh, which note is it? It's, it's the fourth the... from the end of the section. It's the um, okay. position on the fourth string. Ah, okay. So that's the ba. Ah, okay. And I, it's a very strange sound. And yeah. The only I I was sure it was wrong, and I uh -huh. you've changed it, but then uh -huh. I started playing it long and holding it. Uh -huh. I find that I found it a really beautiful note. If you ex if, if you accentuate it. Okay, uh, let me try to play that. So it's uh, um. Uh... Okay. Uh. Oh yeah. Right. Um. Yeah, that's kind of um. Yeah, I changed that. That's right. that's right. Um, I I must have changed it so long ago. I didn't even realize it. So well, it, I have to say, I have to say, it's one of my favorite notes in the entire piece. Okay. So it's <laughs> on try, the uh, eighth. Try, try, try emphasizing it instead of uh, uh, anything else. Okay. So it's on the eighth way. Right. Right. Okay. Um, thank you, John, for pointing that out. I will mark it with red ink. So. Um, well, put a put a question mark next to okay. it. Try to decide yourself what you think. Right, I will, you know, I will try it later and see if I like, like it and uh, see if I wanted to change back to... I'm sharing the screen right now. Is this the note that you're talking about? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Right. Right. Yeah, I did change it. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. Right, I changed, I, I just follow the previous second on the seventh way i didn't play that eighth note um i i did change it the reason might be yeah it, it happened a long time ago and i just at that time i didn't like it so i changed it um but but thank you as, that, as, as i said i when i first played it i didn't like it either and if you just play it as a passing note okay it doesn't work but if you really emphasize it yeah it really uh it's anyway it's stand out uh, yeah. yeah okay thank you uh, can i ask a question sui san uh yes please talking. yeah yeah uh because he mentioned the tuning it can either be if i understand correctly re fa sol la do re mi or la do re mi sol la si mm -hmm. but um so you feel that the whole piece which is very long do they does the whole piece keep changing these two tunings, the arrangement? I that's how I that's how I feel. Um, for example, what do you decide is the fasola or la do re mi? It's just intuition. Yeah, it doesn't matter. In in fact, it for my playing, you know, when I play, um, I'm 
I'm not thinking about the note. I'm just、uh, feeling the melody, so it didn't bother me. But、uh, when I come back to analyze it, feel you know, in this section, I feel it is more stable. You know, ending on the、uh, first or sixth sixth string, but on in another section, I feel it is、um, more stable、uh, to end it、um, on the fourth string, and so I I I realize it kind of a shifting in between these two,、um, you know,、uh, E E flat and B flat.、Um, When I listen to the piece, I naturally、um, transpose、uh, into my own melodies.、Uh -huh. When I do that, I didn't really pay attention that is the shifting tuning at all.、I、That's right. I don't. I think we certainly don't have to to have to.、Um, but I think it might be useful if we try to figure out, you know, why、um, some section. You feel certain notes are passing, and you has a greater tendency of ending at、mm -hmm. some certain strings. So、um, I I think yes, you know it can be do either way, especially、um, for the traditional Chinese way of organizing this. So it could be interpreted as、um, <clears throat> a using the uh, shang um, as the The most stable note, the shang. So it's, or you can understand it as the la or yu yin、uh, if you use the other. But I think either way should work.、Um, you know, I、um, you know when it's the ending for me is very interesting for the ben diao fan because it is、um, it is ending on one and three. So. To me, that's also kind of special. It's wrestle, wrestle,、mm -hmm. um, or la re,、um, and in either way, you know, they both have the shang note. So it's certainly, to me, it's more like that kind of a traditional shang diao feeling, and,、uh, um, a little bit sad, and、uh, you know the. The traditional term for this tuning is called a qi liang diao,、uh, which I really don't like that kind of、uh, term, qi liang diao.、Um, and、um, so I agree. I think it 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 could be a, considered as a consistent. It's just to use a lot of bian gong, or you know you can just interpret it that way. Just use used a lot of bian gong. Um, or you know the other way, it used a lot of the、uh, qing qing jue. So, yeah, that's that's how I you know my understanding of this piece. Thank you. I have a question. So, page, I mean, section two to、uh -huh. section three, and section four. There's all this 对掐起 On the on the same hui position, ten hui、yeah. go three, then ten ten hui do cha qi. Yeah. Then eleven hui go five, and eleven hui do cha qi. Mm-hmm. Then, yeah. So why is that? And yeah, eleven hui. I yeah, that's kind of a weird. You know what I I think to my understanding, there are two way to to do it. Um. So for example, um. So there are two way to do this same way to cha qi. For example, on the fifth fifth string,、mm -hmm. you can do it. So we we did the um, uh, for example, we we did the uh 大十跳舞 and then we use the 明啊十对掐起 So we can pick up right there and do a 错 to go up、oh, to that position. Yes. So yes. I do think that way too. So you just you know that's how I understand. Or another way is to, to to go up very briefly and then cha. So there's another way to play it. Or so to me both 
makes sense. And I personally, in my piece, I found it more attractive to do the second way. So I, I did it this way. Instead of... Mm. Uh, so, but I think that's basically generally when I, how I interpret and how I play when there are the 对插起 on the same position as the previous um, thumb uh, nail stopping. Yeah. Mm. Another question is section four. Uh, line two at the bottom, you have da ba jiu mo seven in shang qi, then da ba qi li seven, and then da qi ba mo seven, tui xia jiu ba. All those A9, mm -hmm. A7, 7A, and 9A, does that make sense to you? Does that mean between or it? Yeah, know. that that section is um, a problematic one for me. So I actually skipped that section. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I, you know, I jump directly because, you know, four, five and six, they all have the same starting. Mm. So similar starting, starting. So basically I go directly from uh, section three to section six. So mm. I skip that. One of the reason is I share the same kind of um, problem with you. I played it and I don't feel very satisfied and I haven't played it uh, in a way that satisfy me. So I feel that I still have, need to work on it. So basically I, I skipped that. I totally agree. Um, I, you know, maybe John can share some because I know John did all these, you know, complete thing on that section. Yeah, I, I'm actually I'm sort of looking about what I'm going to be doing when I'm, I'm up next. So I'm not looking carefully at that. So mm. all I can say is that very often, um, if something is particularly difficult, or it seems very strange, if I keep working, on it, keep keep working on it, it ends up being my one of my favorite parts of the piece. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's, what I said that's, that's how I feel too. So I, I feel I cannot work it out in this before this Ya Ji, so I might need more time. So I skip it and jump to the next section that has good connection with section number three. So I will come back to it too. So maybe we can work together to figure out, you know, how to play it nice and so 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 John, you don't have Sentimipu in front of you? Uh, I have it all over the room. What do you oh. <laughs> Just what, what you want me to look at something? Maybe oh. you can take a look of the Li Sao section. Well, you have it blue? That's the end of section four. Right. I have a chair. Oh, so, oh, that's uni. Oh, great. Thank you. So that, um, Peyo, that section, you know, I, I tried it. I didn't quite like it, but I think it's okay. It's not as confusing as some other pieces. For example, I start with the San Pichi. So it's kind of sound like that. Yeah. So that's how I would play it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's I, 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 that's the way I play it. Also, I kept it, except I on the da. I don't go da da da. You go da da da. Mm -hmm. I I really like da 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 and do it quickly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But that's you know that's not that's not prescribed. Mm -hmm. So then, John. Okay, well, we discuss, We can discuss later. Okay, so now it's John's turn. Okay, and uh, if I'm if I'm going to do Guangyi song, I guess I'm going to talk for minus ten minutes, so I can play the whole piece. No, you're not going to play the whole piece. Right. Okay. Uh, 
first, uh, I could also mention this in, in connection with Lee Sao. Uh, I have this uh, collection of, of images for Lee Sao, one for each of the 18 sections. And I find it very inspiring to look at those when I play it. Uh, I have for Wang Ling Sun, um, I have a couple of related pictures here. I don't know if you can see, this is this is Si Kong here playing the chin. Mm -hmm. And here he is about to be executed. Oh, wow. Okay, um, so uh, a couple of things like uh, about what is Dapu. Um, I think that there's too many different meanings in, in Chinese when you say Dapu. Uh, the, the earliest reference you mentioned, which is actually, it's from 1623, but it's quoting something about 50 years earlier. I think, I think very often in this case, it simply means sight reading. Somebody's, somebody's looking at, at tablature and playing it. It might be something they've heard before or something they've never heard before. Uh, and I think it's probably could be related to the fact that these were scholars or literati who were traveling around the country and they might be off in some strange place and want to play something and they've never heard it before. So they have to play it from the tablature and um, they might take a, a more a more serious approach and work at it and work at it. And I think if they do that <clears throat> and they work it up and make it into a, their own sort of piece, then it's probably changed quite a bit from the original and somebody will write a new Jin Pu. Um, but then, uh, then um, now that's, that's sort of in a way what I'm doing. Uh, I'm, I'll start by sort of sight reading, but then I'm, I'm, I'm analyzing it. Uh, and, um, and for me, analyzing the music is looking for structures in it. Uh, and, and also trying to figure out the big question, which is not indicated, which is the rhythm or the, or the, um, the meter. And with all the arguments about whether the music should be free or, or rhythmic, my, my general interpretation is that it's basically rhythmic, but it's interpreted freely. So if you look at my transcriptions, uh, a lot of it's written out in 4-4 or 2-2 um, because I'm looking for a structure. And I find sometimes, um, for example, if I have a bunch of notes and they don't make much sense to me, I'll just put them in a double time structure and they'll come out, oh, that's interesting. And then having done that, then I can play it more freely. And it, it, even though I don't know what the structure is, it makes sense to me. Um, but I think another important thing is when you're talking about inconsistencies, and, and I think this is related to what you're saying about Li Sao. Um, I suspect, I, 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 I have a whole page on my website about difference between, what, what does Zhuo mean? Because I resist the idea of composing. I think people are creating music as they're playing it. They're not sitting down and thinking, okay, how is this going to be? And how am I going to write that down? I think very often the music was written not by the player, but by a student or something like this, somebody who'd heard it. So, um, and then uh, and then somebody else comes along, they maybe they develop their own way of doing it or change it a bit. And then the person who's, who copies that down looks at the original one and then does their own version. And so they might use, they, whereas, whereas um, in some cases, uh, for example, you'll see Qi Ban, halfway between seven and eight. And in the same piece, you might see Qi Ba, and it means basically the same thing. It just means probably somebody, somebody else was doing a copying for that section, maybe. Uh, so, um, Uh, okay. uh, then um, there is uh, looking for cliches in the music. Um, I've I've been I've been having an argument with a friend about what is what is the significance of Guangling San. Guangling San is about murder and mayhem. Uh, how can we express that on the chin? Some people say, well. First you, first, you have to play it on metal strings. You can't play 
Guangling San on silk strings. Um, I, I don't, I don't agree. But um, the thing is, we don't really know how we express things, how, how they expressed things 2000 years ago or 1000 years ago. Um, and so uh, when I'm doing a reconstruction, I said, as I said, I'm first looking at, 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 at structures and so forth, I'm not thinking about the meaning. And uh, after I think I have a sense of the melody, then I'll try to think of how is this melody going to fit into that meaning or, or either that or I'll play it thinking about the titles or so forth and see how that influences my play. I'm going to play um, two sections uh, to illustrate some of this. Um, and I don't have a split screen. So, I mean, I, uh, <laughs> here's, here's the whole piece in 45 sections. I'm going to first play the first six, I think, sections, and then I'm going to play this part marked here at the end of Zheng Zheng. And at the, in the beginning, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'm sure I, I was shaking that around. Uh, I'm going to be demonstrating something about the non-pentatonic sounds. And in the next one, I'll have, it'll have something to do with the meaning of what the, what the music is about. So, Um, at the beginning, here are some figures that appear at the beginning. Uh, this right here, uh, as, it, as at, at the front, I'm interpreting it as this. Whereas Guan Bing Hu, and I think most others, interpret it as this. It's, and that's because the interpretation of the Die Zhen. Yeah. And I, I've decided that I'm going to interpret this as what I found here by the red which is Banjun. Ban Further ban away from the camera helps. Further away. Thank you. It's Yi Jun, right? Banjun. Hmm? Oh, so a half of a Yi Jun. Right. Hi, Jun. And then, um, right. Oh, oh, here's another one. Also in the same section, this here, and then there's a da jian go, da jian go, and uh, zai zuo or san zuo. And I think that I think that the other people when they are doing or Guan Binghu when he does reconstruction, he plays this and that, and he repeats all of that three times. Whereas what I'm playing is. I'm doing, I'm only repeating the part, the first two notes. And so, so I, that I have, a, I have about, that gives two, uh, two, uh, six, 11 notes. Whereas other interpretations, it's, I think, 21 notes. Then the other thing is, uh, there's a lot of me flats. Um, and here's four examples, in the, and they're all in the, they're all, most of them near, are near the beginning. Um, the 12th position on the sixth string is definitely either on the stake or flatted me. The, between eight and nine on the fourth string, likewise. So when I when I first did this uh, piece, I followed Guan Ping Hu and changed those because he assumed they must be mistakes. Um, but then I keep I consistently found that in this in a Shang mode piece, and this is a Shang mode Man Shang, but it's a Shang mode piece. They often have this minor third in there. 
Uh, oh, maybe I should also add that this was the first dot pool I ever did. So that brings up the question of, of what is dot pool. Um, uh, in this case, I, I, I don't like to say it's a dot pool because I was copying somebody else and then modifying somebody else rather than working directly from the tablature. Mostly what I'm doing is working directly from the tablature and not look, not thinking of anybody else or, or looking at anybody else's version. So here's, here's the result, my result for the first, for the opening. And if you, if you're familiar with these, these, some of those uh, figures, you'll hear that it's a little bit shorter, but then there's these minor thirds in there. Okay, now, now I'll skip to uh, the second half of the middle section, um, where, uh, sorry, um, actually I better read this. The central section of Guangyun sound is called Zhengsheng. That means something like correct sounds or well-ordered sounds. But you might also call it the main division. <clears throat> the, right. The parts before it concern Ye Zheng's earlier life. The parts after it seem to be somewhat jumbled. Somewhat jumbled commentary. Zhengsheng itself, though, <clears throat> pretty much lays out the story of Ye Zheng. To the extent perhaps this says Six section section should be called Nye Zheng sounds instead of Zheng sounds. It's the same character. It has 18 titled sections, 
And uh, that's sections 10 to 27 of the entire 45, 45 section melody. I'm going to play the last 11 sections of Zhengsheng, in other words, sections 17 to, 17 to 27. They begin with a section called Accepting Fate, but with the subtitle Move a Lamp and Sit. It's been suggested that this means that before Nie Zheng actually goes out to avenge his father by killing Jia Lei, he steps, stops, oh, I haven't even said anything about the whole outline of the story. <laughs> um, Guangling San means Guangling Melody, uh, but uh, its subtitle could be, because it's the theme, is Nie Zheng kills, and there's two versions, one is he kills the Han King, and the other is he kills the Han Min Minister. His father has been killed by this um, king or minister, and he's getting his revenge. So um, after he gets his revenge, he goes in, in one case, he, he just gets very, very angry. This is the story from the Shirji. He gets very angry, goes and kills this guy. Um, because the person that had been, the other person, this, this, the minister killed someone who befriended Nye Zheng. So in response, um, he goes and kills the minister. No. It, um, somebody has killed. Anyway, um, one is the minister, and then the, and then the the uh, story that um, is in Xin Cao is the is the it's the king who kills um, Nie Zheng's father because he didn't make a sword on time. Uh, in order to get revenge, uh, Nie Zheng goes out into the countryside, in the mountains, learns to play the chin. Uh, ten years later, comes back and plays the chin in the square until the king gets interested, invites him in, and uh, Nye Zheng takes the knife out and kills the king, cuts off his face uh, to hide his um, identity so nobody will take revenge on his family, but his mother comes and claims his, his body. Uh, as I said, there are two different stories. This story is the one from Qin Cao. Uh, anyway, so um, in these sections, uh, before Nye Zheng goes to kill the king, he has this, there's this passage. Um, um, accepting fate with the subtitle, move a lamp. So he's, he's, he's thinking about how he got to where he is and um, what's going to happen. He's going to go and avenge, avenge his father. The next sections are um, pretty much chronological, except that for some unexplained reason, the sections 25 to 27 seem out of sequence. And this is where I was showing this here. Can you see the sections? Is that visible? Yes, you're yeah. saying that the order of... Uh, I'm one? saying that the, you, you see... I've, Han, Guan, Tou, Jian are different? Uh, right, I've moved, moved those three for the purpose of this playing. I'm not saying that I'm not saying that that's the way it is. I'm saying that that's the way I'm playing at this time because it's, it, it makes more chronological sense. Uh, I'm not moving the music. I'm only move, moving the titles, applying the titles differently. I think they apply just as well, if not better, this way. Okay, but that's something to argue about. So it's section 17 to uh, 26, and I'm going to um, play them and I'm going to say the title of the section uh, before I play that title, that section. So the first one is the uh, where Nia Jung is thinking about uh, what, how he got where he is uh, and uh, what he's going to do. Accepting fate. <laughs>
Raising anger. A grand rainbow mirroring his bravery. Bravery. Bursting with anger. Throw, um, I've switched up my titles. Oh no. I'm There's not. still a little more to that section. Sorry? Um, uh, with anger, uh, with anger. Act, act of, sorry, act of valor, right, I have, I have, yes. the dagger.
exemplary woman. Righteousness revealed. No. Spread the fame. Thank you, John. There's five minutes left for question and answer. Right. Okay. So quick question regarding the titles. So you propose just to change the title names? I am suggesting uh, that it would be interesting to change those title names and contemplate the possibility that somebody made a mistake or as the friend that I've been arguing with says maybe it was done by somebody who was an avant-garde sort of artist who deliberately put the thing in, the, in a strange order or what other reason there might be and i i suspect it has to do with <clears throat> uh what i was saying before i mean i, I should also mention that there of the other uh versions that are surviving the uh they also have the same order as this so this order was certainly set by the Song dynasty um, but that before that, maybe uh, it was this was not composed by someone. It was it created, it originated perhaps in a, who knows what folk melody or somebody's brain, and it, and then it grew, and um, and somewhere along the lines it got switched, and it was by that time maybe so respected that nobody wanted to change it. I don't know. I just this is just something that came to me a few days ago as I was getting ready for this and it, it it's kind of disturbing because I'm thinking am I playing this all wrong? Yeah, just a quick comment, John. Um, I uh, I really appreciate what you said about um, the the score uh, notation taking down. You said that it's usually you know the master just play and follow the music. It is usually the uh, students who you know, write down um, the the notation, and uh, so there it's something you know we, we we work with it, but we also somehow try to figure out what the music should be like, and um, and I I feel strongly that is the case for a lot of you know problems or kind of in, intriguing features of ancient scores, um, and also what you just said about. Um, and uh, the uh, the title when I play Guangling San, I also had a strong uh, feeling that you know the title doesn't make sense. It's not following the sequence. And then now, um, kind of you 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 provide your your um, solution, and I will certainly try to to do that. Uh, I wonder if you could you know like share that title sequencing document with everyone in the email. Um, so I. Really yeah, I think I, I've got a. I've mentioned it somewhere on my website. Oh, okay. I just okay. changed the website, um, but yeah, I'll, I'll I'll check on that. The other, I, I I might also mention that <clears throat> uh, 
while I was doing this, I changed it. I changed some of the translations. I did these, I translated the titles like when I first did this 40 years ago. No, hmm. uh, 19, first did this 1977. How many years ago that was? Yeah. And um, yeah, um, I uh, made my translations. Somebody must have helped me because I'm not quite sure exactly what, uh, how I got the translations. Um, but I was looking at them again, and I've, I've changed them somewhat. Uh, but it, I'm per now I'm 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 pretty confident of my understanding of the titles up through the end of Zhengsheng. But after that, uh, I'm not so sure. It really does seem to jump around, and a lot, and, and that's complicated because at the end they only use, especially well, they, it's mostly just two character titles. So a lot of them, a lot of lots has to be read into that. Uh, maybe I'll just say that uh, the reason why I did Guangling San as the first piece uh, was A, because I didn't know any better, or B, it was because I had the recording and the tablature and a lot of material to work with to study, to do research properly. So um, although it was uh, long, uh, there was a lot of explanation to go along with it. In order to, uh, in order to uh, try my hand at learning from, not from the teacher, but from uh, first, uh, first I, I I did this and one or two other pieces for which there was both transcription and recording, and I studied those. Then I did a few for which I had a transcription, but no recording, and a couple for which I had recording but no transcription. And after I'd done those, then I sort of felt maybe I was ready to do the real dapu, which is to learn a piece purely by looking at the original tablature. And also, uh, I think that um, this gets into, I'm, I'm really interested in comparing early Chin music with early Western music from the standpoint of how do we construct it? How do we reconstruct, how did we reconstruct early Western music? where there was a lot of information missing as well. <clears throat> and the best way to do that, I think, would be to get people to do the same piece without paying attention to each other. Mm -hmm. And after they come up with their own version, then get together and discuss, why did you use that rhythm? Why did you use this rhythm? Maybe this way we could get some better idea about how it really was or what the parameters within which it really was done in the past. Thank you, John. We have time up for you. <laughs> we need to let Mingmei to make her comment. Thank you. Yeah, uh, can I share screen? Because if I just read, some people might not quite understand completely. Yes, uh, please. It's not that not understand, it's hard to follow. Can I share screen? Yes, 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 you have privileges. Uh, I don't know how to do it though. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Ah, can oh. Then then I lost the zoom. Is it is it? Well, oh, see, I, your zoom shrinks when you do share screen. Yeah. So what am I supposed to do? Uh, you can still talk. I don't. We don't see your screen yet, though. You don't. You haven't shared it completely. Oh, well, maybe I just talk. It's just too much trouble. <laughs> okay, I kind of summarize a few points about Dapu. And uh, first, I want to thank everyone today. I learned a lot from all you guys because it's just it's just very interesting. It's a lot of information. Uh, okay. So I'm just summarize a few points that, uh, according to my own understanding, about Dafu, which is reconstructing an ancient tablature. So this reconstruct, reconstructing an ancient tablature, uh, is similar to the Confucian concept. Confucian said, "Shu er bu zuo," I narrate, but I don't create. I mean, if you apply to music, that means I talk about it, but I don't really um, compose a new piece. <laughs> but liking and transmitting antiquity. 
So he liked to trans he liked anything, you know, which belongs to antiquity. And then he tried to transmit all those, you know, antiquity, you know, to um his era. So I think um Dapu is very similar to this concept of narrate, not create, liking and transmitting antiquity antiquity. Um, the second point is characteristics of traditional tin tablature. Number one, we all know, <laughs> is um, traditional tin tablature, they are incomplete because they don't tell you the rhythm nor the melodies. And these are the two most important things in music notation, right? But in tin tablature, we don't know about this. <laughs> we have to do dapu and find out the rhythm uh, with our own imagination and sub subjectiveness, uh, subjectivity. And there is no rhythm, there is no melody, incomplete. Second important thing about traditional chin tablature is um, or literary chin music, the emphasis on spiritual intent or the mood of a piece, which in Chinese we call it yi jing. The literary emphasis a lot on yi jing, spiritual intent and the mood. That means on the other word, they emphasize a lot on the sound beyond the strings. Xian wai ji yin, they emphasize a lot on this. And that's why the temperature is incomplete because you don't want to put in a lot of information because you have to find out you know the spiritual intent on your own you have to find out the sound beyond the strings so the second um point i want to bring out is then why all these ancient temperatures they are incomplete they don't indicate rhythm they don't indicate melody why from what i read <laughs> I bring up two points. Number one is because in Sentimipu, uh, I might get the Mandarin wrong, okay. 情不忘传吧, is to prevent transmission of the chin to unworthy people. Because the chin has been dominated by the literati for such a long time. And as we all know, the literati, I mean, until now, of course, the educated, cultured, few, elite people. So for the literati, the chin is so, I mean, it's so, um, if you're unworthy to, le to learn the chin, I'm not going to transmit it to you. So I'm not going to write out everything in the temperature for you to learn that easily. That was in the past, right? But uh, yeah, thank you, Juni. <laughs> That's good. Okay. But nowadays it's different. We have... We have YouTube, we have everything online, right? So this doesn't work anymore. Qing Bu Wang Chang doesn't work anymore. Everyone can self teach the Qin. Just, you know, so much information online. But in the past, it's different. Okay, so Qing Bu Wang Chang. So I'm going to read the quote from San Qing Mi Pu. Uh, first, I read the Chinese. So Qin music is in Chinese, okay? Uh, Juni, if you can type in Chinese and, and post, I, I will appreciate a lot. Uh, oh, you can cut and paste. So, Senti Mipo, I translate into English. Chin music is secret. Very secret. I'm not going to try and let you learn so easily. Chin music is secret and precautions are necessary so that it is not easily transmitted. If you really want to learn, you struggle <laughs> to get what I'm <laughs> to get, you know, from the incomplete temperature. Quote For this reason, dots, the dots to indicate the phrasing, are not provided to you. Okay, quote. The wise, if you are smart enough, would be enlightened to it, I mean to the music, without all these dots or, or whatever, 
all rhythm, okay? <laughs> all right. Uh, so that's why tomb temperature is incomplete because it's, it should not be easily transmitted to anyone. Okay, and the second reason is because it's incomplete, the temperature, it can allow many possibilities of interpretation to show your personalities. Actually, tune music is very, um, uh, what do you call it, performance-based. My performance is different from yours. My interpretation, my personality is different from yours. So because of the incompleteness of the trend, I mean, of the temperature, you can have your interpretation, he can, <laughs> whatever, anyone can have their own interpretation. So allow a lot of freedom because of this incompleteness. So it's, it's an advantage, not a disadvantage. Okay, the third point uh, I want to bring up is um, the, so this temperature thing, uh, we dapu, uh, we try to interpret from this ancient temperature. First is based on written tradition, shu shi de chuan tong, written tradition, tradition, the free tradition. Second is the oral tradition. And the third is the hand transmission. Okay, so what is written tradition? So look at, uh, I'll show you Yang Guan Shan Bie, the piece that I copy. So uh, do you see? Can you see or not? Can you see? I'm afraid you'll have to disable your uh, filter in order to see anything that's not your face. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> um, okay, let me try. Uh, uh, the video. Um, I go to video. Video setting. Video setting. I don't see it here. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Okay. At the bottom, next uh, to the microphone. Video setting, and I disable mm. disabled it. Right. It says choose video background, and then choose the blank one. Uh, I I don't see the word video background. Uh, right. Where is the video? Oh, background and filters. Okay. On this video setting, there is... Yeah, I am on video setting, but I I don't okay. see any video background here. It's let not me... video settings, it's video background. Let me share, let me my share my video, screen. Mira, my video, I don't see any video background. Virtual, virtual background under the little arrow under start video. <sighs> let me, let me share oh, my background, screen. Background, background, I, I see right. the word background, okay. Background and filters. Okay, so I none, okay? okay. Right. Right. <laughs> All right. So this is the temperature that I copy. I still very traditional, so I copy with calligraphy, uh Yang Guan Shan De. Okay. So this is written tradition. And in order to my student, let's say, so I copy some um from different temperatures about this piece, Yang Guan Shan De. So this is written tradition, okay? So, and when I taught, uh, uh, teach my students, uh, at the same time, I will also, uh, how do I go back to, um, oh, okay. So at the same time, I will explain a lot of things to my students, right? I will explain. So I will combine the written tradition with oral tradition. And I have to demonstrate with my hand postures and also the negative space uh, between the two hands. All these very subtle, minute details. And this is transmission with my head, not with my mouth, not with the written tradition. Okay. So, uh, all right, the, the fourth, I guess, one, two, three, four, five. The fifth I want to bring up is uh, many pieces, many tin pieces, they have what I call characteristic fingerings. I think uh, Juni mentioned that because Juni mentioned you said a, even a very small fingering could tell a story and that's exactly what that is. So many characteristic fingerings. For example, Gui Chi Lai Qi, returning home, the first um, fingering is a zhuang plus a nao plus a yin. So it's a very complex fingerings, a combination of three different fingerings to express a very complex sentiments because, you know, Tao Yanming, uh, because he just quit politics to return home. So he had a very, very complex sentiments. 
so as we know, and also very famous piece is the uh, 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 Yu Chao Wan Da, right? Dialogue between the fisherman and the right? woodcutter is a lot of empty knock, Xu Yan, empty knock on the wood to imitate the axe, the sound of the axe hitting on wood. So all these are characteristic fingerings used by a specific piece. Okay, so we have to pay attention to that when we do the uh, what we call um, uh, reconstructing an ancient tablature. Final, the characteristic fingerings. There are many, many. They have their own characteristic fingerings. Okay, I think this is the second last one. This is very important, and Peyo pointed out because <laughs> Peyo mentioned that uh, when you uh, when you reconstruct that piece, you you um. For the for the rhythm, you just do it on intuition, and that is exactly right. <laughs> and it should be done in this way. When you hear it comfortably, and then you do it, you you don't have to calculate all this like Western music, like conservatory trained musicians. They will do a lot of things according to Western music, but this is not the tradition of the Qin, and this is not the aesthetics of the Qin neither. So we do it our traditional way, because if you do it in the Western way, actually it kills a lot of aesthetic in the Qin music. So what I try to say is, you pay attention to the metric, non-metric rhythm, not metric, not with the with the not with the uh, met metro metronome, okay, not the metric rhythm. Uh, in the earlier trans posing of the chin uh, a lot of people still use the bar line which is to me is is wrong it, it just it is not it, you shouldn't use that okay so Wu Wen Guang actually did it right he used the bar line but sometimes he used the half bar lines when it cannot be completely followed uh, because we don't have the strong weak strong weak rhythm at all as uh, Juni point out because that would become very monotonous and that's not the way of the chin anyway so I want to call uh, a, a, a passage written by Cheng Gong Liang, not me, of course. Uh, and he, I think, he get <laughs> to me got everything right about the rhythm of the chin. Uh, what we I want to say, he already said it. So let me read it. Um, okay, Cheng Gong Liang quote: In general, Qin music uses two kinds of beats. 用了两种, uh, 这个beat, okay, what is regular? Uh, another one is irregular, During loose playing, san, san tan, the rhythm is free and leisurely. San tan And each note's duration varies. That's very important. That's what he said. In Chinese, it is yin fu chang duan mei you ding shu. 啊,不是正那個拍子機那種,一定要一定一個定數,古琴沒有的,它就是比較隨意的。好,and he go on to say, quote, sometimes a piece we use long and short, short beats alternately, 有時候長,有時候短,那個拍子。This is referred to as 跌蛋彈, okay, freestyle. That is, without regularly measured beats. I don't know if you explain, that's very clear. Even in sections with regular rhythm, 就是入派的时候, Qin music always retain its free style. 入派的时候还是散板,有点散散,它不是完全入派的. So even if you try to beat to the rhythm of the music, 你要跟着古琴打拍子的时候呢, you need to realize that each note, 每一个拍子, does not have the same duration. 每一个拍子还是不是完全, uh, uh, 就是, 他的他的講法的拍子之間的時值, the duration, 不是均衡的, 不是完全一樣的, 所以呢, 有時候那些拍子呢, sometimes tense, 啊, 有時候緊, 有時候鬆, sometimes relaxed, sometimes speed up, 有時候呢, 快, 有時候慢, sometimes slow down, 所以他教這種拍子呢, 叫它怎麼變化多樣的節拍,就是polyrhythmic. So Qin music has this characteristic. During loose playing, 你彈的散板的時候呢,也有一個小段落呢, they give you the feeling of regular rhythm. And during sections of regular rhythm, 入派的時候呢, sometimes there will be the feeling of loose rhythm. 入拍的时候呢,你听起来也有觉得呢, 
兴趣有散散谈的感觉，所以他的意思呢，所有的情曲都是有一种这种散跟入派的一种非常他的用词，非常微妙的交叉啊。So the feeling is of very subtle alternate alternation is between the regular rhythm and the irregular rhythm. OK， 那么这个是成功量讲的啊。最后我要提到呢，打谱，根据那个古谱来打谱。古谱给你的啊、uh, ，the ancient tablature is give you a frame, a frame incomplete. That's why a frame is for your the player, the 打谱的人啊。Uh, you to you go to fill in something it hasn't been said. You have to fill it in. So 打谱其实 to be is a process of illumination. 有时候你就不要的哈，好像刚才那个水煞。你不是把整段你就去掉了吗？所以是 process of elimination。Sometimes if you don't like it, you can take it out. And also addition， 你还要加进去啊，你还要加你自己的东西进去，就是给你这个 freedom。Is that's why the ancient tablature because incomplete they give you the freedom. You can eliminate. It's a process of elimination and so and process of addition. Ah,、uh, you you add something you want to add. You think it's right, and then you do it. So that's why 打谱 is called recreation. 在创作就是这个意思。它真的一个在创作。所以呢 ，and also because there is a famous saying for tune music is 琴多谱外生 There are many many notes outside the tablatures. Ah,、uh, 这个是一个一个一个很很 popular saying. 琴多谱外生啊，就是。你自己加，<笑>好了，我就讲到这里为止，谢谢。Wow, very, very nice, very、uh, knowledgeable. Thank you, Mingmei. Thank you. It's a very good conclusion and comments. And so, thank you, everyone. And all Yaji. Oh, by the way, does anybody has question for Mingmei? If not, we will end the Yaji for now. Yeah, just want to say、uh, thank you,、uh, Mingmei, and uh, uh, for the great comments and a lot of、um, information that I I benefited a lot.、Um, and thank you everyone for sharing your Dapu experience. And you know, I learned from every one of you.、Um, so yeah, I probably need to end this soon because I have some work teaching、uh, coming. So thank you. Thank you, Susan. Yeah, and so,、uh, mm, yes. Oh no no no! I'm not. <laughs> I just I think that's a this is a very good yaji this time. Oh um of the um and um, uh of the dapu because the dapu is just a very very important um important what do you call it important thing in in Qing music because it's really recreating really 在创作 it's very very important yeah. And、we have so many ancient tablatures. We have a dapu so that we can play them. Yeah.、Okay. Uh, someone asks, does anyone can write here in Chinese? Uh, well, well, I let let me type in Chinese. Qing duo pu pu wai sheng. Right, Qing duo pu wai sheng. Qing duo. Well, this is actually uploaded on YouTube. Okay. Uh, okay. Qing duo. Uh, Qing duo pu wai sheng. Thank you. Right. Yes, we.、Uh, yes, we have.、Uh, actually, we have YouTube live stream right now, so there's recorded on YouTube, also on Facebook. Ah,、uh, Pio, can、yes. I ask a question? Yes.、I'm、curious. Why don't people just join? Why they have to listen to YouTube live stream? Why don't they just join our Zoom meeting? <laughs> why? Why they have to? I don't know, but people, people have、uh, time conflict. Some people they want to join. Yeah,、yes. but live stream is the same time. Oh, the live stream is recorded. They can watch later. Mingmei, if if it's live stream, that means anybody can join. Whereas now it's 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 not restricted, but there's more control by the host. We want to know who is who's there. Yes.、Mm. As day as yeah. I still don't quite get it because what's the difference? <laughs> but it's okay. Don't worry. In other programs, many people come in who shouldn't be. Adding comments and listening, so、okay. better this way.、They've... So we control the people who can do the、um, live, or what do you call it, the Zoom meeting. Right. Tribute.、Oh, okay.、Yeah. But but for live stream, they can still leave comments. I mean, nasty comments if they like. <laughs> on, on YouTube, yeah. 
they can still do that. Uh, they can still do that, but we can delete it. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay. I got right. it. I got it. At least. <laughs> and it's recorded, so you can people can watch later. Like I will watch later. Okay. To to yeah. To understand more. It's a good way to keep minutes and uh, records for posterity. Okay. <laughs> for posterity. <laughs> okay. The, okay. The, only, the only problem is that the so-called um, live stream, the record is often misunderstood. So it has to be edited by someone who knows all the, who, who knows both Chinese and English. Because even in English um, meetings, there's so many misspellings and misunderstandings. So <laughs> it's a very co coarse and crude record. Mm -hmm. So the video is still the most accurate because we can see mm. and listen. I just li like to add one thing, and that is I think that the reason why uh, Chin Tablature doesn't include everything is that it, Chin was an oral tradition. It was primarily an oral tradition. When I studied with my teacher, he said, copy me, don't look at the chin pool. And the chin pool was just there when your for when your teacher was not there. Yeah, it's an A memoir. A lot of people mentioned that. It's a A memoir. That means you you just A to your memory. Right. But still you have the written tradition. You can't do without that. <laughs> you still you still have to have it. It's the boat actually and the hand transmission, in my opinion because the posture is so important. I mean, I watch a lot and learn a lot from my uh, from my teacher, Chai Lao Si, her hand postures. And also, as I said, but Chai Lao Si didn't explain. But I watch a lot and then I explain to my students and how the empty space also has a lot of significance there because when she crossed hands and because her hand postures were so beautiful and you learn a lot even <laughs> from the negative space from her hand. <laughs> That is the hand transmission. But she she didn't need to she didn't need to say anything. Okay. Okay. I think six. So okay, we, okay, we will we will three, end the three hours. <laughs> right. We will end the meeting here. I will make one more comment. Okay. Ming Mei said, um, "Because you are a painter, Ming Mei, you mm -hmm. can talk about negative space, and people who write calligraphy and who paint." value the silence and the negativity negative space as much as the ink mark or the hand gesture and yeah. that's why the the arts are so closely related it's not just chin playing in isolation it's oh no 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 yeah that's what i talk about in my bar talk is the chin i talk about this negative space review by the movement of the hands and then the yes, negative yes. space review so, cut out cut out by the the, the ink yeah no they're, they're very very similar very similar yeah could you make could you um uh, uh, could you make your talk available to us did either record it or have another uh yaji in which you deliver your talk uh, i can think about that <laughs> yeah no, just think about it i mean that's you know now we're talking outside the program this is discussion on future programs, but um, you can discuss it with um, Peyo. Mm -hmm. Yes, sure. Yes, we can because arrange. Because mm -hmm. it's not just a casual comment, it's really a system of, not a system of thought, but it's a whole approach to the art. Yes, it is. I agree. Yes. Uh, okay, I think that should be enough for today. And thank you, Peyo, particularly for organizing. Uh, I think it's a very successful Yaji today. Thank you, Ming Ming. Organizing this, I mean, it's not easy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay. What so, is the next is Guanglingsha. The next right. Is the next is one it? will be on June, uh, June twelfth. Uh, I can Sunday, play June twelfth. I, I can play the Guanglingsha. Okay. Uh, we yeah. we're going to have different versions. What Guanglingsha uh, study? Yeah. So and if I you will I join, person, I add a lot of stuff. <laughs> So you you are based on the Senti Mi Pu as well, No, no, right? no, no. I based on uh, uh, um, Wu Jingru, basically based on his uh, his uh, playing. But I add a lot, I a lot on my own stuff uh, that I heard other people play or whatever. I don't know. But I already throw in a lot of my own stuff. But, but the, the framework is based on his uh, uh, Wu Jingru. Wu Jingru. Wu Jingru. Meanwhile, uh. 
for the other people, uh, for the version studies, I'm gonna be. I studied uh Wu Jingwei's version as well, or Wu Wen Guang's, but I'm gonna have to unlearn that and present what's interesting or what's unique in the Silu Tang Xin Tong version as I was assigned that homework. But Juni, you might know uh Wu Jingwei's version. What what version did he base on? Is it Shanti Mipu? Because I I mean Shanti Mipu. Oh, okay, good. That means I might basically also Shanti Mipu. But I base on Wu Jingle's version, basically. But I add a lot, a lot of stuff. <laughs> if you if you want to know if you want to know the available versions, I have recordings of about eight, I think nine different versions. Oh, um, okay. I'll go to your website. Okay. They're all linked from my Shanxi from my. To your website, my, just uh, I just search for Guangling San, right? You have all these versions. Under Guangling San, there's they're all linked. Okay. Okay. Great. Right. Yep. Great. So, so I will. So if I, I will <laughs> keep you all posted about the next okay. uh, Guangling uh, San. Yeah, early June, right? Early June. June twelfth. June twelfth. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. It's about a month from now. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. So we will. Okay, so thank you, everyone. <laughs> thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you, Mimi. So we will stop here. Okay, the, yeah, I, I'll, I'll just leave. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Okay, bye. So, uh, Ralph, are you there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, Hi. so we can stop the recording and then stop the meeting. Thank you, Peo. Thank you, Ralph.